Robert Galang is the president and CEO of Signal TV and TV5. With a career that's broadcast media, telecommunications, and consumer durables, Robert's influence shaped fast revenue growth and sales results for Signal. He is credited as a driving force behind the growth of Signal TV's subscriber base from only 40,000 in 2010 to over a million in 2015, making Signal the first pay TV brand to breach 1 million mark. Today, Signal continues to be the number one pay TV provider in the country with some 3 million subscribers. With TV5 reinforcing its entertainment offerings, Signal TV has partnered with TV5 through a block time arrangement aimed at making a strong competitor for the top spot in the broadcast industry. Hello, Robert. Hi, Josiah. Thank you very much for this opportunity to interview you. It's my pleasure. The fantastic thing happening in Signal TV from 40,000 to some 3 million is no joke. And this is just in a short period of time. So I, I'd like you to explain to me what happened and what's your business model like so let me first, who's a typical target market of Signal TV? Okay, when we started with Signal, basically our target market would be the Filipino households, Filipino families. We've segmented it, because if you look at our postpaid service, we are uh, going after the ABC households, ABC families. But we also have a prepaid service, wherein we target the CD market. And a few years ago, we launched our entry-level brand called Satellite, which basically targets D and E families. Okay. So because of the demographics of the Philippines, we really have to cater to the entire spectrum. A new development that's happening now is that you know, there are more people going into streaming services. So we launched our OTT service, or Over the Top, called Signal Play. And uh, this time we're targeting individuals. So when you avail of a signal service, you are not limited to just having the service installed at home or enjoying it at home. Now it can be an experience uh, that, that, that you can bring with you using your mobile devices. So when you're in vacation, you can still take a look at your favorite signal show. Huh? Yes. So let yes. me ask you now, so how do you describe your value proposition. What is your value proposition? Well, when I joined the company sometime in 2010, it was very clear that we want Signal to be able to give the best TV viewing experience mm -hmm. in the Philippines. It's a 24-7 service, multi-channel. Okay. Uh, when we talk about multi-channel, it's not just the, the quantity or the number of channels we have, but we make sure that we offer a good mix of genres channels that will be able to cater to each member of the family. So it's a good mix in the, of uh, local and international content. Mm -hmm. International content, we source it from the various content providers, mm -hmm. but we are also into producing our own content. So we have our own organic channels. Exclusive content. Exclusively available in Signal. But we also syndicate this with other cable TV providers in the Philippines. So it's another opportunity for us. But what we want to really give to the consumer is the best viewing experience. And, okay. and it's not just content, it's also the quality of the experience. We were the first to offer high definition oh. on pay TV. And to date, we are also, we are the first and the only pay TV provider who offers content broadcasted using Dolby Digital Audio Technology. Wow. So it's a visual, audio, yeah. it's an audiovisual delight. Correct. All of these are very pioneering. Yes, yes. And uh, we, we continue to be pioneers in, uh, in terms of technology. Okay. So, so it's the best content, the best experience. I want to ask you about a question that you're so familiar with. You're a sales expert. What was your channel of distribution like? What have you been doing in the area of channel distribution? Before Signal. When you want to avail of a pay TV service, and it's right. usually cable, yeah. or it was cable, you'd have to go to a, a store or a business center operated by the, the pay TV provider. Mm. So that was the old model. model. So what we did, and we pioneered in this, is that we set up 
a network of distributors all over the country. Mm -hmm. They're numbering about 50 now, mm -hmm. and they're assigned specific territories. Correct. The new thing about this is that these distributors are exclusively selling signal. Mm -hmm. They're not selling any, any competitive product. Okay. And among the pay TV providers then, we were the only one who had the confidence to talk to a potential distributor and then we told them that, you know, we can work together but you have to be exclusive to Signal. I see. And uh, that same philosophy applied also to expanding our network to include dealers mm. uh, working under the distributors. Mm. We also built a network of dealers who are also exclusive to Signal. Mm. So that would be for the sales fulfillment. Mm. Now, one thing that we also pioneered in, we introduced prepaid mm. for pay TV service. Yeah. We're the first in making it very convenient for you to buy your prepaid load. Because when you're on prepaid, you have to buy your load on a monthly basis. Mm. When your load expires, you lose the feed. Now you have okay. to go buy your next month's load. What we did was, you know, apart from our distributors, dealers, agents, and installers who were already selling load, mm. we added to our distribution network of load Smart's e-load network of distributors and dealers. What happened was we created an e-load product and we made it available through Smart. And Smart at that time had more than 1 million retailers nationwide. You know, you just go to any Sari Sari store or any retailer selling Smart Load and you can buy your signal load. And on top of that, you mentioned that it's the content are not just available in TV but also in the mobile device. No? Yes. So aside from say, distributing our service, uh, the boxes and the satellite dish, Correct. Now we also made our service available through uh, PLDT, yeah. wherein if you avail of a fiber subscription, broadband subscription, you can have signal bundled with your PLDT service. That's so true. that's also an innovation. And I also said that, you know, there's OTT as well. Thank you. I want to ask you now about your marketing strategies, your customer bonding strategy, essentially awareness trial mm -hmm. and repeat purchase. So what are your strategies like? Okay, when we started, especially we're not a big company then, maybe I cannot even say that we're a big company now, but we had to be prudent with how we, how we market our service. Mm -hmm. So we relied mostly on uh, on-ground efforts. Using our distributors, our dealers, and agents, we would go face-to-face -face with the consumer, with the customer. We did not really heavily rely on above-the-line advertising, mm -hmm. TV advertising. We, we did a little, but not at the same level as you would see like how telcos or tel telecom companies do it. Mm -hmm. So we had a little of above-the-line TV, print, but we did a lot of on-ground advertising through street merchandising, store merchandising, making sure that our dealers and agents would have all the paraphernalia needed to sell, like pliers, brochures, or we even codi boards. We call them codi boards. It's a yeah. codigo board. So it's a tool that they use for selling that gives them the complete information about the product, about the service. Yeah. So that's how we marketed our, our product. Did you do sampling free? couple of months or is, is that something that's standard in the industry? Well, sampling was really standard. Although there was, I remember there was a time wherein we tried that. You could have signal installed for a day and try it. At some point we realized that it was not gaining any real traction. But what we are strong with is offering them promotions. Like if you get a signal service, you get immediately get one month free. If you get satellite, you get two months free. If you're a subscriber, of another pay TV provider and you want to get postpaid, you want to switch to us, we give you three months free, we give you free installation, you give you a free box. Then we also have to keep them aware or keep abreast of all the, the content, the new content that we're coming up with. Robert, I want to talk about your revenue model now. I understand you have a lot of sources of revenues. What are these? Our core business really would be the monthly service fees paid by our subscribers. For postpaid, they sign up to, a, to at least a two-year contract. It's a minimum, but we've seen our subscribers really stay beyond that period. So the revenue that we get from that will be the monthly service fees that they pay. Now, for postpaid, there are opportunities to increase the revenue through pay-per-view, also through channel add-ons, uh, wherein we encourage them to add more channels as an a la carte option or upgrade their plan to a higher plan. Now for prepaid, the revenue would be their monthly load, 
which they purchase month to month, the amount that they pay would depend on the number of channels that they'll enjoy. So those would be our two core revenue sources. Now, we also have decided that we cannot just be a pay TV distribution company, but we made the decision to go into content creation because we've started developing our own organic channels, our own exclusive channels. No? So we went into content creation and then it's now a new revenue stream for us. So for content, the source, how do we monetize content? Well, for, it's easy, that's Signal, instead of buying content from the other content providers, we use our own. So we have some cost savings there. But more importantly, there's an opportunity for ad revenues for content, new from licensing and syndication. So basically, those, those are the main revenue sources that we're seeing now. We're done discussing the offering model. I want to shift now and talk about the operating model. What's the value chain of Signal TV like? Uh, we will start with a... Uh, the most important thing, which is content. We talk to a lot of content providers, you know, both international and local. Our people would go to conferences or uh, events where these content providers come together and show us you know, what they have. So, because it's important for us to always be ahead of the pack. We always have to know the content that's out there. So we have to be able to choose the channels, or not just the channels, but for our own, say we have a lifestyle channel called Colors. So we curate the channels and content, and we put it together as a bundle, as a package that the customer subscribe to. And we have to be careful because, you know, we're serving the entire family. We're not targeting specific individuals, but we need to have content that would be suitable for the parents, for the dad, for the mom, for the children. And even when you look at children, several age brackets, and then once we're able to, to package it, no, they subscribe to it. We have to make sure that we're able to deliver to them the best quality experience and it's reliable it has to be very reliable like uh, you know you don't want a pay tv service that shuts down or service cuts gets cut off with signal what we have is 99.98 percent service reliability that is very high yeah you know that this is impression before that you know if it's satellite it's unreliable because it can be affected by weather disturbances but in reality only severe weather conditions can affect the feed, but it will only you lose it for a few minutes, a few seconds, actually. So it's more reliable than a cable TV service when the delivery relies on kilometers of cable you know, before it gets to your home. So, so many things can happen. For and, before and very the impressive. I, need, I, I want to congratulate the 99.98%. We talk about value chain. It's not just you know, getting your service and watching the shows, but quick installation, you know, it's, it's important for us and also quick after sales service. You know, but when, when something does happen to your box, to your dish, then we're able to quickly send a technical team to address the problem. That's true, so that's good. That's, so it means from content, marketing, distribution, installation, billing, service. No? So that the whole system of activities. No? Yeah. What about key processes? What are the important key processes of Signal TV? Maybe I'll talk about uh, the delivery of the, the content. No, we're very capital extensive. Uh, and you were talking about acquisition of content yeah. a while ago. Yes. I'm sure that's, uh, you know, we spend we a lot yeah, of time there. We spend a lot of money on content. Uh, that's our biggest cost expense. And next would be capital expenditures, making sure that you know we're at the top of our game in terms of technology. Yeah, so you know, by way of production. You know? Yeah, we have to keep investing on uh, new equipment, new software. You know, we're the only pay TV provider that, that operates two head ends. A head end is a, is a facility that gathers all this content and then broadcasts it via satellite so that you get your feed at home. Now we have one in Porak. We're the only pay TV provider that built a second head end in Davao. So that when something happens to the head end in Porak, you know, we cut over to that head end in Davao. And you know that, that the Philippines is exposed to you know, a lot of these uh, calamities. We have to be prepared for any eventuality. Yeah, that's for service reliability. Yeah, so th that's a key process, you yeah. know, really yeah. ensuring that we're able to deliver the feed. Now, for sales, because as I mentioned earlier, we're, we were nationwide on day one. So we have to make sure, you know, that all our distributors, our dealers, our agents are very knowledgeable about our product, about the service. You know that they get updated with, with all new, you know, all new features or all new programs. 
So we built this ability to be able to communicate with them using technology, using email. They have their own Viber groups. It's a very robust, very dynamic community of uh, trade partners. Because it's important that, you know, when a customer in some far away province, when he wants to get signal, he gets the same quality of service, the same response time, same as any person who'd live in the city. What about key resources, Robert? What hard asset or soft asset do you consider to push your value proposition? I will start with a soft, soft asset. And I'll talk about the brand, Signal, and Satellite. When we started, there was deliberation or thinking, do we go low price, you know, because, because people then were saying you know, that the market is saturated. There are so many cable providers already and then you're offering a new service. You'd have to be the price leader. But we didn't go for that. We, we decided, you know, to build a very strong brand. For Signal to really be premium. Premium, but still affordable. It's important and then that we're able to, it's aspirational, but it's not too up there. Right. And uh, we were able to develop a, a strong sense of brand love, not only from our subscribers, but more importantly, our employees. And the quality, the, 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 the best TV viewing experience has to be consistent. So that's why we're, we're very particular about, as I mentioned a while ago, in service reliability and uh, a very strong full sales fulfillment and after sales service. I, well, I told you a while ago that we have a second brand called Satellite. It's an entry level brand. But for that category, it is also the premium brand for that category. So I guess quality and the strong brand equity is something that, you know, that are very, very dear to us. You have an extensive library of uh, yes, your because content. We, because we're now ready now into content creation, and that's also a key resource. Because the thing with content is that you, you create it now, you air it, but you still get to use it over many years. So the monetization path for, for content is quite long. And uh, the content that we create, we own the intellectual property, so it would always belong to us. And then a hard resource would be you know, our network. I said we have world-class equipment because what we want is that, you know, when you, when you look at Signal, you have to be able to compare it with a kind of pay TV service that you would see when you go out of the country. It has to be world class. And it's important. You don't see it. Customers don't see it. Subscribers don't see it. But they, they experience it with content and viewing experience that they see on their TV screens, in their mobile devices. Robert, who are your key complementers who help make the value proposition? Oh, it's a blessing that we're, we are part of the MVP group. And uh, I would say that that's our sister companies would be the key complementors. Number one would be First Smart. We made prepaid load available through their network of one million retailers. So that was a key differentiator for Signal. Second would be PLDT because more and more people now are, are getting broadband or fiber subscriptions. You can avail of Signal bundled with your fiber subscription. So it, it makes it just so easy. We're in, you know, it's, it, we call it triple play. I mean, you get you, PLDT provides the landline service, the f broadband service, and signal. Aside from the our sister companies, would be the content content providers. They also work with us in doing promotions. And says, like if we're, when we every year we do this channel blowout, wherein we open up all the channels to all our subscribers, the content producers, because we're working now with, as I said, you know, the best in the industry in this industry. And the thing is, because we're working with line producers, we're able to cast a wide net we're in, uh, they help us get the best talent. We're able to create content quickly and be able to bring it as, you know, at the quickest possible time for our viewers to enjoy. Let's uh, discuss about reconfiguration, which in essence is about innovation. What are your industries first, or what have you stopped doing that everybody else is doing? Mm -hmm. uh, what are your start doing? So mm -hmm. can you share with us these uh, elements? I remember, you know, we're proud to say that, you know, there, we did a lot of firsts in this industry. Some have already been uh, copied by others, they, they followed suit. You no, know, we were the first to broadcast on high definition. 
for the first to, to, to broadcast using Dolby Digital Technology. We're still the only one, so that's still our advantage. Third is uh, our exclusive distribution network. It's a, something that we innovated or initiated that nobody has, has uh, been able to copy. So having a network, as I mentioned a while ago, 50 distributors nationwide, with about 2,500 dealers, not counting the agents, installers, dedicated to selling signal alone. So that's a, a key advantage, competitive advantage that we have. What about the stop doing part? We've also made some mistakes along the way. Years back, uh, our competitors started offering a 100 peso denomination load. At that time, the lowest prepaid load amount was about 290 pesos. Now, because they offered 100 pesos, they were getting the numbers. They started getting the numbers. And then we reacted by offering also 100 pesos denomination. But that proved to be a, uh, a wrong move for us. Because what happened was the market now started to look at us in the same way as they look at the other competitors. competitors. So we stopped that. And then, because we were still sensitive that there would be markets that that would have lower incomes. So we still made the 100 peso available, but only using uh, physical load cards. In that way, we were able to distribute it to the markets that would need it more. So you're so very selective and very selective focused already. on this market. So in a way, we were able to stop the, the financial uh, bleeding uh, when we stopped making that available. And uh, I guess at some point, maybe don't offer it anymore because we have Satellite, which is a, a new brand that has 99 peso denom load. What about your cost component, Robert? What are your major costs? Oh, the biggest cost would always be content. Content, yeah. Content, content. you know. It, that requires the biggest investment, especially, you know, when we get channels like HBO, Fox, CNN, and all these uh, food network, HGTV, you know, we pay them licensing fees, but we don't own the content. We, just the just, right to Yeah, the right it. to broadcast it. Yeah. So that's expensed out immediately. And then when we produce our own content, that's also, that would also require a substantial investment in terms of, you know, production costs, you know. And, uh, but that we get to capitalize. So, because there's a longer time frame where we could monetize it. Unlike for pay TV content, when it's just you air it and then that's it. You don't own it. Content would be the biggest cost component. And you were telling me that, you know, you spent a lot in technology and in your sales and marketing acquisition as well. Yes. Again, to be able to broadcast the kind of quality you have, it requires a lot of uh, investment in equipment and constantly upgrading it. You know, what you buy five years ago, you won't be able to use it anymore because there's always a new technology that's available even just in compressing video. You know, before, it, you invest so much in this equipment, but later on, there's a better way to compress videos. So that's uh, a major cost, cost for us. And because, as, you know, as I said a while ago, you know, we're here, a lot of the households in the Philippines, majority would be C2DE. It's about 67% of the market. So to make it affordable for a bigger number, of households no, to avail of signal, we're also subsidizing the boxes. So when they buy the, the setup box with the dish, it's subsidized. When you get a postpaid service, you don't pay for the box. So it's subsidized as well. So marketing acquisition cost is also quite substantial. Now, I want to ask one last question, Robert. Ten years ago, you only had 40,000 subscribers. Now you have some 3 million subscribers. Can you give us tips? How do you create a winning business model? It's a combination of all the, the many things that you're doing. I can't say there was, a, there was a magic bullet, but there were just, you know, because I, I, would, I would say this because really my background is really sales, right? We brought in a lot of people to be involved in the business. When we created a distribution network of distributors, dealers, and agents, it's like we shared the business with them. Versus the old model, we're in, it's a company who would set up its own business centers and he sells on his own. 
So basically, all investments are his and all revenue would belong to the company. But what, what we did was we shared it. There would be now thousands of people. Their source of livelihood would be Signal. So it's creating partnerships, no? uh, not just partnerships with, uh, with the trade, but you have partnerships with the content providers. We have a very strong relationship with them. We're very cooperative and very, we work together to, to build this business. Because as we grow, they also grow, so we, we help each other. So very strong partnerships with equipment providers, the satellite service provider. So I guess building partnerships where that, that are always win-win. That's probably one, knowing who we are as a brand, even as a company. Being consistent with our equity, with the quality that we promised, that we, we said we will deliver. So that's very important for us. Um, and it's a, it's a culture that we've developed inside, uh, inside Signal. Uh, as I said, there's a strong sense of brand love. So I guess you really have to love your, your company, your brand. When you work, we also have fun. You could work with another principal and maybe earn the same kind of income, the same kind of money. But in, in Signal, we have fun doing it. We enjoy working with Signal. They're happy. We're happy working with Signal. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's already a culture that we've developed. We celebrate a lot. I learned a lot today interviewing you and you, know, you're, you share it uh, from your heart. Thank you very much, Robert. Oh, the, as I said, the pleasure is mine and thank you very much for this opportunity.